got some breaking news this hour. Media is being prevented from showing aerial pictures of the Melbourne protests and riots. Earlier today, a request came from Victoria Police Media for broadcasters to stop streaming the aerial pictures of the protests that we had yesterday. The Victorian police have now applied to put a no-fly order on the media helicopter, which supplies pictures to various outlets. It's believed the order is to last three days. Oh, hey, guys. Nothing to see there. Just an authoritarian police state that arrests and disappears people in the middle of the night for making social media posts that now is making efforts to make sure that you can't see the true scale of protest against them. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Zuckerdowski of WeAreChange.org. Lots of utter lunacy out there in the world that we're going to be uncovering in this video. As we just had a very surprising moment on national television where Bill Gates was confronted about his very sinister and cozy relationship with some of the worst human beings on the face of the earth. His replies were filled with distortions, misinformation, and outright lies that we're going to be countering in this video, highlighting some very serious implications that we're going to be linking with the agenda that's unfolding against you and your family members all over the world right now. Now, I think it's fair to say from all the recent protests that have been happening in Australia that this is leaving with a lot of people feeling, as someone captioned with this image on social media saying, quote, there's more of us than them. And trying to prevent that realization could be why the authorities in Melbourne are trying to prevent journalists from broadcasting the actual news and information of what's really going on there. Also, by the way, Melbourne was just hit with a pretty significant earthquake, a 6.0, which caused some property damage, which of course won't be able to be fixed predominantly because the Australian authorities in Melbourne has have just arbitrarily shut down all construction for two weeks because construction workers didn't blindly comply with the orders the government was barking at them. In response to people not having blind faith in the state and, and just complying without question, the authorities, especially the police department, have had a very heavy-handed approach, which includes throwing down 74-year-old women on the ground and th then pepper spraying them when they're already disabled. This kind of policing rings true to the latest events that have also been unfolding in Melbourne, where police officers have been shooting less lethal munitions on people trying to gather. This video coming just moments ago from the Shrine of Remembrance where police officers fired tear gas and rubber bullets as people were trying to peacefully assemble with like-minded individuals. They, of course, were met with this backlash for... Uh, standing there. There's also a lot of other distressing video footage showing men in what looks like military tactical uniforms arbitrarily using force against individuals that were just talking to them. All of this in the name of public health policy as the Australian government keeps dangling in front of its citizens that everything will go back to normal if they just comply. The latest mile marker that the Australian government is setting is that everything will, quote, reopen by Christmas. I can almost guarantee you that this is probably not going to happen, as, of course, the Australian government, along with many other heavy-handed, lockdown-loving, bureaucratic communist states, have also been making similar promises that they routinely never deliver on. Here in the United States, we have some politicians wishing that we had similar policies like they have in Australia, as already young children in this country are dealing with similar types of bureaucratic big government surveillance states in our education sectors, as reported on by Michael Tracy, who just released a very eye-opening investigative reporting article about what's happening in academia that should scare the crap out of a lot of people. Locking people down in isolation, publicly shaming and attacking people who have social gatherings, stealing people's money for, for daring to interact with their loved ones, and the list just keeps getting crazier and crazier, and I would definitely recommend you guys read this article with what Michael Tracy calls a quote permanent surveillance bureaucracy that soon will govern the rest of the country and with the way things are going especially with the United States recently announcing that if you want to visit 
the United States officially. You will need to be required to jump through government hoops and do the procedures that they want you to take. All, of course, as people are just walking in through the border illegally with some politicians hoping that they will be future Democratic voters without any of these restrictions, lockdowns, tests, or mandates even needed you just literally have to walk through the southern border which many people are and as average everyday innocent law-abiding civilians get put through more bureaucracy have to jump through more hoops they also have to deal with an ever aggressive domestic surveillance state and its apparatuses like the fbi that just confiscated 800 safety deposit boxes leaving people without much recourse for their personal life savings this as the biden administration that has the fbi at its helm is becoming ever so insulated and resistant against any accountability and transparency as even White House reporters have come together to launch a formal objection about this president about Joe Biden refusing to answer questions from the press and with all of that happening we wonder why some states like New Hampshire are looking to succeed from the Union so yeah that's happening now before continuing on we wanted to remind you about one of the companies that we've been working with for a while and that is pro one water filters i personally like these products i use them myself i think you will too especially with the crazy times we're all in right now but even without the madness having water filters is just common sense to me you know personally i'm, I'm not a fan of uh, pharmaceuticals pesticides parasites herbicides heavy metals microplastics all up in my water so i, I personally use a water filter i rather that than than go to the big box stores and get my little plastic waters which uh in my opinion is not only a big waste of time but also a, a big waste of money and and also if, if you're one of those environmental freaks you should be using a water filter since it saves you from using a lot of plastics with your small tiny tiny bottles of plastic water if there ever was more of an outright con it definitely is the one of literally making people pay for water in little plastic bottles Th that idea is ridiculous to me that's why i like to work with per one check them out in the link down below also i have a lot to say later on today in a separate video that i will be releasing on lukeuncensored.com there's crazy footage of a doctor being arrested for doing something that we can't even mention here on this independent media channel there's a new bombshell chinese whistleblower that is verifying what we've been telling you for a very long time about a theory that i personally had that's becoming truer by the day the theory that a lot of this nonsense is deliberate and intentional we're going to be going over that plus a lot more all exclusively on lukeuncensored.com i hope to see you there later on today now very surprisingly once in a blue moon we get a question that is actually legitimate on the mainstream media to someone who is in a high position of power. That one moment just happened on PBS NewsHour where Bill Gates was asked directly about his long and extensive multi-year relationship with then convicted person who did unspeakable things to children. And Bill Gates was directly asked about this relationship, was essentially asked, what the hell was he thinking doing this? Uh you know, I had dinners with him. Uh, I regret doing that. He had relationships with uh, people he said, you know, would give to Global Health, which is a uh, interest I have. You know, dinners, dinners, Bill, really, dinners. That's all it was. Was was just dinners? No. The executioner of Jeffrey Epstein's will was Bill Gates's right hand man. Jeffrey Epstein funneled money into Bill Gates's projects at MIT, which MIT tried to cover up, and Bill Gates knowingly is even on the flight logs multiple times flying on the quote Lolita Express publicly according to the written record. There was this was more than just dinners as of course the relationship has spanned far more intensively and wide than most people even still know about. So already from the very beginning Bill Gates is lying through his teeth about the exact relationship that he had with Epstein that was more than just dinners. Not nearly enough philanthropy goes in that direction. Uh, you know, those meetings were, were a mistake. They didn't result in uh, what 
he purported and I cut them off, you know, that goes back a long time ago now. Uh, there's, you know, so there's nothing new on that. No, 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 no. There's a, there's a lot on that. And uh, you, you cut those meetings off. Where's the proof? When Bill Gates' wife literally said she divorced him because of him refusing to stop seeing Jeffrey Epstein. This according to many sources repeated by even the mainstream media. And holy goodness, does this man look uncomfortable. And also another aspect to really understand here is that when... Bill Gates says that he was doing this for, for public health, for the world health. I mean, r really, r tr tr no evidence to back that up at all. But, but also, most importantly, people need to understand that Jeffrey Epstein was a huge proponent of population control and eugenics. He openly paid for and participated in eugenics projects that would literally seed the world of him and his genetics. He was doing absolutely weird, strange, and even according to some scientists, absolutely immoral and unethical scientific experiments that, of course, he financed and paid for. Their interview goes on. Recorded that you continue to meet with him over several years, um, and that, in other words, a number of meetings... Um, what did you do when you found out about his background? Well, it, you know, I've said I regretted having those dinners, uh, and there's nothing, absolutely nothing new on that. Is there a lesson for you, for anyone else looking, looking at this? Well, he's dead, so, uh, you know, in general, you always have to be careful, uh, and, you know, the... You know, I'm I'm very proud of what we've done in philanthropy. Very proud of the work of the foundation. Uh, you know, I, that's that's what I get up every day and focus on. Wow! Uh, even that last comment, he's literally like like laughing, <laughs> almost maniacally, almost like he's getting off at, at lying, which he he clearly is. And his last comments. Quote, you have to be careful, he's dead, and then laughing, smiling, um, doesn't really, uh, yeah, it speaks for itself. Now, I'm very happy PPS even raised this question, but we have to understand here, the journalist either is, one, uh, afraid to, to counter and question Bill Gates on his obvious lies here, or two, is absolutely ignorant and wasn't prepared to ask that question adequately since, of course, she knew very little about it. Either of those two are plausible explanations, but, but uh, again, Bill Gates has a lot of very serious questions to answer, which he has yet to do so, and every time he addresses this matter, he raises more speculation than resolve. A lot of people have commented with gifts like this in response to this video, saying that he's guilty, saying that he is a liar, and we have to understand that, that, that Bill Gates still uh, is a major shot caller in the global health industry, as even publicly revealed through the Dr. Fauci emails, as Dr. Fauci looks like he was getting his guidance from literally Bill Gates on what policies to implement here in the United States. This is a man that has injected billions of dollars into many multiple scientific projects that are still ongoing that many people in the scientific community have said created a, quote, Bill Chill and has prevented a lot of legitimate criticism against Bill Gates since, of course, his money is so entrenched in the big pharma, medical, and scientific community. As I see it, he has yet to fully answer for his very close relationship to Epstein and what they were doing together, what specific projects they were working on together, where the money went. As, of course, as we know, Bill Gates and a lot of other people entangled in this Jeffrey Epstein mess are still at the higher upper echelons of authority and power along with influence of the modern establishment that are still absolutely imperatively important when it comes to their projects that they're trying to impose on everyone. Jeffrey Epstein's sidekick is, of course, Ghislaine Maxwell, her sister, is still one of the head people at the World Economic Forum calling for a great reset, which is, of course, something that Bill Gates has personally called for himself. What is the great reset? Well, as the World Economic Forum says, with slaves, or sorry, the people, not owning anything, not having any privacy, but, quote, being happier than ever. 
And th that's the system that they're they're building. They're actively doing this in many parts of the world, especially with policies that they have already implemented, especially in places like Australia. We have seen similar calls to limit the travel, the freedoms, the liberties, the privacies of everyday human beings by these same types of people for a very long time. They previously tried to use the excuse of global warming as an excuse to lock people down, prevent them from eating meat, prevent them from flying, prevent them from going from places on vacation, preventing them owning cars, and now we're seeing the same kind of garbage implemented, which they called for with global warming, but now implemented with the sickness that has been spread all around the world. The Nation even released an article talking about how people's ability to travel should still be limited, even after this sickness comes and goes. Because it's, quote, good for the planet when people are restricted access, things like travel, if they're in the poor, middle, or even upper class. Unless, of course, they're a part of the super billionaire class that includes people like Bill Gates and Jeffrey Epstein. Again, the agenda has always been the same, even though the narrative has been changing. What these globalists want is essentially leading to policies that are leading to people's subjugation. The people at the World Economic Forum that are influencing individuals like the Pope, many huge corporations, many political institutions are literally calling for the micromanaging of your existence by these bureaucratic big government forces that are literally hell bent on eviscerating any form of free human life that you have on the face of this earth. Again, Bill Gates has called for. A lot of these restrictions, a lot of these controls before, now they got it through this sickness. This sickness that even according to the Telegraph has a very high chance was produced in the laboratory that had ties to individuals like Bill Gates. Again, this is not me saying it. This is the Telegraph as there's a new Chinese whistleblower coming out. And again, I, I, I don't even think I could talk about this on, on this YouTube channel. I'm going to be saving this particular topic, the, the Telegraph article, the latest revelations. I'm going to be talking about all of that, plus a lot more, all exclusively on LukeUncensored.com. The video will be coming out later on today. We will email everyone when that video comes out. Make sure you're signed up on LukeUncensored.com in order to get these videos. And soon we're going to be opening up this platform to have forums, discussions, polls. There's going to be exclusive merchandise only available to members. We got a lot of things planned for LukeUncensored.com. I hope to see you there later on today. If you thought this video was accurate, if you thought this video was somehow helpful to the larger understanding of how the world really works, share this video with your friends and family members. If you thought I did a poor job, let me know why in the comment section below. Dislike this video if you disliked it. Like it if you liked it. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys sharing these videos with your friends and family members. And because you do, I'm still here. And that's why I love you guys. Stay tuned for a lot more here on wearechange.org.